It's Sunday night, and this is The Conjugal Visit on KGFRocks.com. Frogs.com. Welcome to the Conjugal Visit. How is everybody out there doing? Hope that you are doing well. And a very special happy Mother's Day to all you mothers out there. And uh, how about you, Guido? Your mom have a good Mother's Day? Yeah, I think so. Yeah? Who and knows? My, 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 my friend Guido here. I'm not going to say good friend because he takes offense to me saying he's a good friend. Yeah. Yeah, he, I'm just his friend. Okay. We're just friends. Anyways, We're just Facebook so, friends, you know. So what did you do for your mother today? Bought her uh, some jewels and had a cookout, you know. Bought her some jewels? Nice. Yeah. Nice. Oh, well, and, you know, it's it's uh, one day of the year, you know, celebrate your mother. But really, you should celebrate your mother every day of the year. Hmm. Oh, yeah. You know, I celebrate my mom all the time. My mom's gone now. She's been gone since 96. But, but you know, mothers are special. You know, and then I've got I've got this one here, my wife, and she's a mother. This she, one here? Yeah, my what wife. you said? My yeah, wife. Is she, is she in the studio with you right now? No, she's not in the studio with me right now. No. She has left the building. Oh, okay. As it were, as it were. So, Mine's here playing on her phone. She's on, playing on her phone? Hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, tonight's very special guest is Rick Delosier. Yeah. And Rick Delosier, um, he uh, is a songwriter, and uh, he's really does a lot of uh, solo stuff. So he's a great guitarist, and um, yeah, all around yeah. great guy. It, and his band is like Delosier, isn't it? Yeah, it's Delosier. Yeah. Wow. And, hey, listen, you know he. he you know, he's got a great band with him. We're going to talk about that. A great bunch of guys right. that work with him. And we're going to talk about what they got coming up and their new album, and which is going into rotation right now. And uh, mm. we're going to talk about all kinds of stuff. And then it's going to get away from that. Too. We're gonna we're gonna dig deep, man. Tonight we're gonna we're gonna find out what he's really thinking and what he's you know what what makes Rick tick. And, yeah, and then we have uh, Chaz, <laughs> Chaz coming on for a record review. Uh, yep, Chaz will be on record review here in a few minutes, and before the, and then at the end of the show, I've got uh, my good friend Eddie Chris coming on. We're going to talk about the video interview that we did last week, and we'll be getting published this week. So, uh, lots to do on the show tonight. I'm really also excited. MJ. Oh, and MJ. Well, I, you know, I, I, we're going to find out about MJ. We're not really sure. We haven't heard anything, so we will find out. And but that leaves more. That leaves more room, definitely, for uh, Chaz. So Chazarita. We, we, yeah, Chazarita, and uh, we'll we'll find out. So we would definitely find out if if she wants to play tonight. You know that 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 new mustache of yours is you know. Um, you don't like of it. I don't know. You, you, are you trying to look like the uh, the guy from um, what's the hell, County Choppers, or are you trying to look like a seventies porn star? What what what, what look are you? I am a seven, I'm trying to. It's cheesy. Is it cheesy? Is that what you're telling me? Uh, not so much cheesy. You do like granny panties, so I guess it does suit you. No, but I tried to wear that one time, and I looked like a Mexican bandito. <laughs> Uh, like, like Donald Trump was gonna throw me out today, you know. Yeah, she's uh, she's up yeah. for it. She's up for it. So we'll have MJ four twenty in tonight too. All right. Wow, we got a full show tonight. All right. We do. So all right, quit but, your uh, flapping and let's start doing. Good, this. Let's start doing this. So let's bring in uh, Mary Jane and see what right. she's up to. And she's probably going, "Oh my God, he's ready to go right now." <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Yeah, and she's probably in the bathroom, dude. No, she's not. She just talked to me. She's not in the bathroom. <laughs> no. She's like running across the room, one one shoe on. Uh-huh. Uh, hey, MJ, how you doing, <laughs> sweetie? <laughs> he said she's you probably... fucking stoner. <laughs> <laughs> Were you in the bathroom? No. I no. Was watching... I was watching 30 for 30. 30 for 30? What's that? That's on Netflix. You can pause that. Yeah, yeah I did pause it. Okay, okay. <laughs> Which 30 for 30 are you watching? I'm watching, what is it, Magic. Magic Begins, or no, This Magic Moment. It's about Magic Johnson. Very good one. And the, the other good one is, um, the uh, was it the Oakland Raiders? The, the Gangs of New York. Oh, yes, Oak- yes. I saw that one. It's so good. I learned Very a lot good. about it. Free doesn't know what we're talking about. I have no clue. I'm watching. It's a it's a Netflix thing. It's a Netflix thing. It's on ESPN. It's a program that they do. It's like a documentary on certain things in sports. Like they'll do they'll do the life of Magic Johnson, or they'll do. But it doesn't go into the whole life. Like they did one on OJ, but it's central on the murder trial. I mean, it's different. You know, it's like they go all over the place. You know, a lot of people forgot about what that guy did on the football field. So, oh, and a lot of people, I, you know, here in Buffalo, we have never forgotten that. And uh, you know, he used to slash all the time. You know, oh. well, Guido was bashing on my mustache. What do you think of my mustache? Gay porn Actually, star. it's more about the Orlando Magic than Magic Johnson himself. Oh, oh okay. And so as a. Uh, my, they talk a little bit about Michael Jordan. It, you know, it's just a basketball documentary. Yeah, yeah. Are you into basketball? Um, I used to be back in the day. To... Yeah. What's the, be- what's the best basketball team? Uh, well, I'd have to go with the Warriors because I'm from the Bay Area. But when I used to really be into it, I was a Kings fan because I love the Kings and I love purple and they had good colors and good players back then. Well, you know what? Uh, well, both California teams, the Bo- Sacramento and uh, the, um, oh my God, Golden State, mm. were not that good for a lot of years. It was always no, uh, and now the they're kicking and, ass. They are, and my team was always the San Antonio Spurs. I always I'm, loved. Um, I am just not a basketball fan at all. I don't watch it all the time. I only you know, watch you it. You cut out the off. first fifty-eight minutes and just go out there and play for 20, two minutes and just kill each other. Yeah, I'd it, actually, see my that. favorite basketball is when they do the skills competition, like the the slam dunk competition oh, and the three gay. point and yeah. all that. I mean, they can fly. I mean, I gotta admit that's pretty I think awesome. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah, like that they can fly feather. like that. That's, that's MJ. What do you think about his mustache? Uh... It looks nice. Don't don't uh, lie. <laughs> don't lie to me. Don't lie. Tell me I'm the truth. Because right. like, next week it looks it'll like be he gone. Should put some ashless chaps on. And Do I look sing gay? YMCA. Does it look gayish? Uh. Okay. Well, I guess guys that wear it like that, I guess tend to be gay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hulk Hogan has one just like it. Um. Yeah. Is he gay? Well, he's gay to me. He's yeah. gay to you. You don't like him. <laughs> Well, I think it's nice. I think it, All right, that's it. It's coming off. It's coming no, off. I mean, nope, no, it looks good. But I like men with facial hair. I dig facial hair. I think men's with beards and mustaches. <laughs> look, it makes it look manly. Right. And Guido's over here scratching his chin. Yeah, well, see, the thing of it is, is manly, right? But he looks like he should put assless chaps on and go sing YMCA. <laughs> I'm not a cute douchebag. <laughs> okay, okay. No, I'm just kidding. It looks, good. it looks good. It looks good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Whatever. It does. Whatever. It does. It's coming it's off. Good. That's it. I'm getting rid of it. Look, Ron Jeremy. It looks good. I'm serious. Ron Jeremy. Ron Jeremy. <laughs> Ron Jeremy. Yeah. Oh, I could only hope to be as talented as Ron Jeremy was in his prime. Right. So anyway, um, did you watch the Kentucky Derby? I didn't, but I saw all the news about it, like all the different hats that everybody wore. Is that what all you were into, the hats? Uh, you, you, know, you didn't pick a horse? Don't horse. you like the horses? No, I've never been into horse racing. So oh, I- horse God, racing one- is the stupidest sport ever. I mean, seriously. Oh, my God, they're running. Oh, that horse is faster. He's going to win. Dude, dude, what the? It's boring. 
And the Kentucky yeah. Derby no, is more for boring. and the Kentucky Derby is more for what hats the women's going to wear and mint right. shoes. Oh, but if you've well, never been to the racetrack, right. if you've never been to the racetrack, I've been to the racetrack. Yes, I, I don't think it's a boring sport at all. That thunder of those horses coming down the track, man, is just it's amazing. The fastest one minute in 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 uh, sports. I mean, it just. I don't know, man. They're thoroughbreds, man. And and, and this guy that uh, uh, Nyquist or Nyquist or whatever his name is, who won uh, yesterday, and he broke records, man. That guy there, that horse there is a is a an athlete. He is an athlete, and he's on the same caliper when you look at it, at his weight and his size and his a- athleticism. It compares to any major league baseball player, any you football know, you player. You know what I want to see, though? What I'm tired of is the athleticism and all this. I want to see, like, a race with fat guys. And I want to see, like, <laughs> you know, like uh, a basketball game with fat, overweight dude. Oh, fuck, shoot, dude, give me a second. <gasps> you know, uh, that is going to be more entertaining than these athletic people because you know they're good, what's going to happen. You know, well, at least not if you always. Got... I mean, I've seen Come some on. disasters in sports. Josh we'll really call it the. Go through a lot in order to do what they do and ride those horses. I'm not saying they're not athletic. And I'm not saying there's a lot of things they have to do. Yes, there is. The jockey's life from documentaries I saw is horrible. It's pretty tough, man. It's yeah. pretty But I, mean, I just don't find it appealing. And I know there's tons of, tons of money involved in horse races. Yeah, I think horse racing is more for gamblers. I guess. Yes. I mean, that's, I mean, I know, like, my biological father, apparently, well, from what I've heard stories, that he was a gambler. And he would bet on the horse races all the time. Was he Kenny Rogers? I don't know. Could oh, be. I <laughs> never met him. So. Did he have you know? one foot on the train and one on the platform? It possibly. Yeah. But, you know, I don't know. I guess that's what I've always known it for is, like, gambling. And if I'm going to go gamble, I'd rather go to a casino and play slots or poker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's you, you, you have just as much money. It's like betting on NASCAR. Yeah, you get like free drinks. NASCAR. You get free drinks in the casino. You don't get free drinks at the race. At the racetrack? Yeah, well, if you're a high spender, man, they take good care of you. Just like but at what, the casinos. If you're a big spender at the casinos, they yeah, put you up Yeah, but a big spender at the, at, at the racetrack, at the big sp- Come on, it's a lot more big spender. Well, a, guy than- put, a guy put a $250,000 bet on the winner yesterday. And that fucker there, he won close to five hundred thousand dollars. And that was lucky. He's got to win more than that if he put two hundred fifty thousand. No, he, well, he it depends on what you bet on. If you bet yeah. on one horse to win, then then True. you win a shitload. If you if you bet on the first three and pick the first three, that's a boatload of money there. I, I've been to the Buffalo Raceway about twelve times. One time to watch horse racing and eleven times to watch concerts. <laughs> <laughs> They have concerts there at your horse track, at the racetrack. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Cool. Yeah, during we have a, a, a the big a fair come here, and it's called the Erie County Fair. It's the actually no lie, the largest county fair in America. Wow. It, it, over over a million people come to it every year. So wow. they have concerts during that week, you know, and and the racetracks closed down. So they have concerts. I've seen Ace Freely in there. I've seen Hank Williams Jr. in there. I've seen uh, Charlie Daniels there. Uh, a lot of different bands, and uh, it's kind of cool there for the concerts because you're on the track, so you're like right there, you know. That's cool. On the track. I don't know. It just seems like the Kentucky Derby is more for like, mid, you know, twenty five hundred dollar mint juleps. Yeah, like for rich, rich people, people, I guess. Yeah, yeah. rich people only. Hoity toity people that. <laughs> Hoity Where the toity. big? <laughs> what the hell is hoity? You think it's I don't know the man. big floppy hat stuff? It's not our kind. Like five, yeah, I don't. I would not fit in. Well, I, I I understand that one year Janice Joplin went to the pony, went to the races. Yeah, but she wears floppy hats, so she was okay. Yeah, she was <laughs> in with those blue sunglasses she wore, and, and she had just as much money as the other people there, anyways. So it, it didn't yeah. matter. It's all yeah. out money, you know. I mean, and some of those. Horse owners, they make so much money off that horse because if that horse is a winner, then they stud that horse out, right? And then and they make hundreds of thousands of dollars off each uh, horse that's created from that. What's stud. his name? The the guy that won last year, um, American Harry, Pharaoh. 
American yeah, Pharaoh. Yeah. American Pharaoh. His stud fee is two hundred and fifty a whack. Right. And he, he, they say he has sex three times a day. <laughs> that's that's that that's a whole lot of fucking money. That's seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars a day that horse is bringing in. Sure. That's amazing. That's why he must well, be more And that's out why more. it's so important for them to win those races because that stud fee goes up. Right. Depending on how much of a champion they are, which I don't know, it makes no sense. You could be the laziest horse in the bunch and have a and an offspring. That's the best. I mean, I don't understand the meaning behind that. Just because that horse was awesome doesn't mean his offspring. I shit. There's people that are awesome and have. Fucking well, idiots. no, that's a, that's a part of the gamble, though, man. That's a part of the gamble. That's why does part it have to be taking a chance? Any horse, if it's a thoroughbred fight, it's a thoroughbred. Well, there, well, there was just, a guy that a had he had the. Uh, they did it by the numbers yesterday. The guy paid one hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars for this horse. Yeah. That horse brought him three million dollars. Yeah, it's a gamble. Three million dollars. And that's the season. That's just in one season. All the races he won and all that stuff. So it's, you know, it's a hit or miss. I mean, not all the horses are going to be like the American Pharaoh. Or, so and that's why those horses stand out. And they're the best. If you got $250,000 to, to buy a around. horse, I don't this, want to hear you complain. This, this year will be the first year, well, it will be the first time that two horses won the Triple Crown back-to-back. Yeah, yeah. I think I think Nyquist is a fast. He won that race by five lengths, so he yeah. he, he was all on ass. No you know question. how much I care about this conversation? I, <laughs> no, but that's okay. I'll put up with your kiss conversation <laughs> every once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> we were we were okay talking about that. <clears throat> so, anyways, yeah. so so when uh, uh, when when we're all said and done here, okay. So you're not into horse racing, is that what you're telling me? No. Pretty much. <laughs> and you like basketball, right? I like basketball. I love football. I even love baseball. How about hockey? You got a hockey team in your town. You know, hockey's yeah, I do like hockey. It's very it's I think it's more fun though to go to an actual game. Than to watch it on T V. Yeah, yeah, than to watch it on T V. Yeah. Your team your team suck over there. I don't care. You know what? We do because we do this thing where we get we do really well, and we get off into the playoffs. We're always we're almost there to win the cup, and then boom, we just freaking lose it all. Yeah, your San Jose is fixing to lose to my Blues here. <laughs> Come oh, on. They fucking piss me off because they get cocky mm-hmm. and they're like doing good, and then they freaking fuck it. Yeah, yeah. The what are they, what do they do? They fuck it. No, they <laughs> fuck it. They fuck it up. That's yeah. right. Fuck it up. Well, so, so 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 tonight we have uh, we're gonna have a new segment here. We're gonna have album reviews. Um, I don't know if every week, but every so often. So we have a yeah. my brother coming in to do an album review tonight, and uh, mm-hmm. well, so that, that should be a good time. You, and we what pick album a newer, are you guys gonna review? tonight? He's doing he's doing an Anthrax's new album. Oh. yeah, haven't yeah. heard it yet. But I'm giving him, and I'm not saying it yet. What which one he has to review for the next show because I don't know if he'll like this band, so it's kind of cool he'll actually have to listen to it. Hmm. You gonna tell us what it is, or nope. is he listening? He's listening. He's listening. So you, <laughs> he's listening. Hi, yeah. Chaz, brother. That's Chaz. Chazarita. Chaz. Chazarita. <laughs> <laughs> we need to bring we, we need to bring him in. You gonna what bring him in about? now or? Bring him in. What the hell? We'll make it up. If I can find him, I can't find his number. Uh, for crying out loud. Uh, it's right there on the side of your panel, Todd. No, it's not. I don't. There it is. I found it. No, I didn't. <laughs> yeah, I did. I found it. Is he ready to go? He, yeah, yeah, he's ready to go. Call. Just yeah. call him. Just call him. I just so, call. So what's your weather like out there, Mary Jane? Uh, well, today's weather is very cloudy, a bit humid. We're like 68 degrees right now. No sunshine, possible rain. Okay. All right. How about you, Guido? What's your weather like? It was actually yesterday was beautiful, and today was kind of chilly. So it's weird. Okay. Buffalo. So right. you today, don't like the weather. Wait five today, minutes. Yeah, wait five minutes. Well, we had beautiful afternoon, beautiful mid-morning. And then uh, in the afternoon, it clouded up. It wanted to sprinkle a little bit, but that's about it. No severe weather. High temperature today was 84 degrees. I'm still waiting for it. Okay, that's hot. I'm telling him the answer. It's hot. What would you say? That's hot. He said it was like 80-something degrees. 
84. Yeah, yeah Missouri is the weirdest state on in the world because Missouri gets deathly hot and then ridiculously cold. Well, we're Korea. We're like yeah. Little Korea here. They used to call Fort Leonard Wood Little Korea. Yeah, I hated Fort Leonard Wood. Yeah, colder than well diggers' ass in the wintertime and hotter than hell in the summertime. Yeah. No room to breathe. I think the he's, weather's just stuck no matter where we live. Yeah, everybody has their own problems with weather, you know. Look at those poor people up in Canada burning up, man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All those crazy. Canada. That's crazy, man. And God bless our firefighters because, man, yeah, we got some going hard. up there. Miller Beer, Miller Beer shut down their, uh, he's busy now. Uh, Miller Beer shut down their whole factory just so that they could can water to send up there for the folks. So did, the so did Labatt's. Oh, yeah, that's Labatt's awesome did it too. Them. Yeah. So that's I don't know. Cool. It's crazy to see I can all think these he was connected. Things. Are you connected there, Dubage? No, oh, I'm here. Yeah, you guys hear me? Yeah, we can hear you now. What's Excellent. up, dude? What's up, Chad? Sir Chad. What's going on? What's going on, no, man? Nothing. I was just listening to the show. I just heard uh, Guido drop some knowledge of he's giving me my next album, so I'm oh, scared so because it's probably mm. it's probably going to be Prince. Oh no, oh, no, it's actually something oh. brand, brand new, and I don't even know if he's gonna make it yet. But there's tracks that were released from it at least, though. Okay. He's gonna, okay. he's gonna make you review Beyonce's new album, so be prepared. Oh no, it's rock. It's rock. <laughs> <Definitely> rock. <laughs> Captain and Tennille making do, a do, comeback. Do you want me to tell you right now? <laughs> sure, why not? Just give us the name of the band, anyway. Uh, it's uh, uh, the new album by Andy Black. Oh, okay. Who? See, I know who that is. That's the singer of um, Black Andy Velvet. Sex. Yeah. yeah. Right. And uh, he's di- definitely different from Black Veil Brides. Okay. He actually sings through the whole song now. You know, he doesn't do the screaming part anymore. And the first two songs I heard from it, I really thought were cool. So I want you to hear it, listen to it, and give your uh, thing on it, and we'll have a debate next week. I guarantee you we'll have a debate. Okay. Well, I'll certainly check it out because I don't mind the Black Veil Brides. They're like the, uh, you know, they're like this newer generation's Motley Crue, and you know, it's different, but it's pretty cool. Yeah, but but this is so different from the Black Veil Brides. You'll see when you hear it. But anyway, all right. Free Ride doesn't know the Black Veil Brides. I bet you, do you? Free Ride. Yeah, I do. do I've you? heard of them. Have you? I, as a matter of fact, they're my friends on Facebook, man. They're not your real friends. <laughs> They're not my friends. They don't care about me. No. So have you guys care. reviewed Zach Wilde's new album yet? No. Not yet. Is Zach Wilde's new album? It's yeah, a good it's one. pretty good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it'll, be, uh, it'll, it'll be in the list. So You definitely th- should still throw it in. Give us some information on this, uh, this Anthrax album. All right. Well, this is the brand new Anthrax album. It came out. It's called For All Kings. Um, it came out um, a couple months ago, right? Now, Anthrax to me goes hot and cold. Sometimes their albums are really great. Sometimes they're trash. They've been going back and forth between singers to the point of, I think in the past, I don't know, six, seven years, they've switched between Joey Belladonna and John Bush each twice. It went Joey, John, a different guy, Joey, John, and now we're back to Joey. So it's pretty wild there in the Anthrax camp. But um, what I would have to say about this album is it is a winner. It is awesome. Um, it's got a couple of good like single radio hits that are on, and that's what first got me into it. And you, you, you know, you never know how good that will be. How you know it could be an album full of crap with just the radio singles. I put it on. I got the vinyl, like a hipster douchebag that I am, and uh, I think it's awesome. Scott Ian still brings it. Um, the drummer from Anthrax is one of the best, most underrated drummers in the entire world, Charlie Benante. That guy is crazy. Um, they 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 have a new lead guitarist, John Donias. John Donias came from the metal band Shadows Fall, which I used to enjoy about 10 years ago. Their old guitar player, Rob Cagino, left to join um, Volbeat, so he went off to a more famous band right now. But with the new influence, the guitar playing sounds great. I'm going to give this album right now so far as my early candidate for the album of the year. Really? I, I, now, I want, you, I want you to rate it. Now, do you want to rate it with uh, with um, stars or do you want to rate it with, uh, let's see, what can we do? Hard-ons. Uh, with hard-ons. Bong hits. <laughs> bong hits. How many bong hits do you give this one? What is it so we're going out of five? Is that what it is? Yeah, yeah, I guess five. Yeah, that sounds about right. 
Um, you know, it's hard to give something a five, so I'm going to give this one a good old four bong hits. Oh, good. Hey, that's pretty I good. I haven't listened to the whole album yet, but the lead-off single, or I don't know if it's a lead-off single, but Breathing Lightning, uh, I would almost give that five, that song. I would give it like four and a half, just that song, um, because it's very radio-friendly, something Anthrax really never grasped a lot before, was the ability to put songs on the radio. And uh, this is a perfect one. Well, I'll, I'll tell you what. They were always the, like, um, you have your big four of thrash metal, you know, Metallica leading the forefront, Slayer, Megadeth, and Anthrax. And Anthrax was always, like, you know, the stepchild that nobody paid attention to unless they are doing something with Public Enemy. But uh, the past two albums that came out, a few years ago they released Warship Music, and I just, I heard it one day, I was like, what is this? I remember, oh, I used to like Anthrax. What the hell? It sounds good again. And then love that album. This album came out. I mean, I absolutely love it. These guys, I'm going to have to say, depending on what Metallica does in this upcoming album, they, to me, are actually the only ones making good music right now out of those four. Slayer sounds the exact same, um, which is not necessarily a good thing. I was never a fan. I know they lost their guitar player, but they replaced him with just a clone. And that's not for me. Um, Megadeth's new album is up and down, but Megadeth was always like that for me. Metallica has a lot of work to do to catch up to Anthrax, in my opinion. Well, and I don't think they'll be able to do it because uh, the the drum incident uh, from Metallica's last album kind of soured, or not from last album, but two albums ago, kind of soured a lot of people. Yeah, everybody wants. It's not just the uh, drums. That whole album sounds like. It's oh, the help was a piece jam. of shit, and it was. It was recorded in the garage <laughs> or something. You know? <laughs> yeah, that's the. I mean, it was literally. I mean, I was. I'm a huge Metallica. I still am a huge Metallica fan, but that's the only Metallica CD that I never bought, and I didn't buy the next one after that because of that one. Well, you're missing out. Let's be clear. You're talking about Saint Anger from '04. That album is right. very, very crappy. Uh, you know, the one that came out a few years later, um, Death Magnetic. Dr- Death Night Magnetic. Yeah, I like that album. I owned it. I bought it the day it came out. That's that's Metallica album. But, but right. yeah, you know, it's not like it's also probably eight years old now. Something like that. They've taken their time. So. Yeah. You know, you got to keep out there and you got to keep putting Anthrax. Honestly, their last two albums to me are, I would say, I mean, this one's new to me. This one was four bong hits. Worship music's even better, 4.5. I would say great albums. Everybody should check them out. Really? Nice. Right. Well, we're going to have well, Anthrax Why don't you play a snippet? Play a snippet? I gave it to you. You didn't have it. <laughs> no, I don't have it. Don't we have it? In, um, I don't know. No, I'm prepared. I know. I know this is a this is a first for me. Actually, I was prepared with I was set up with Delosia. I didn't know I was going to play a snippet. Um, I don't have it. I gave it to you, dude. I know you did, but on the other side of the world, not on this side. You gave it to me on my other side. He's really stoned right now, so he just no, 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 no. That's not it. That's not it. I'm not really, really stoned. But the, no, the thing is. Is it's on my other Skype, not on this one. You didn't send it to this one, so I don't have okay. it. I didn't download it. I was busy doing the stuff with our guest. You were not doing anything. Yes, I was. <laughs> Honest engine, man. Honest right, there engine. it is. Okay, he's going to send it to me now. <laughs> but anyways, so, it, it, I just want the listeners to listen to a snippet of it if they haven't, because I mean, some people will, will think of Anthrax and be like. Uh, you know, anthrax, they're too heavy, whatever. This is no, not no, see, I, I see, Greedo is different. There's, yeah. a, there's a lot of people, in my opinion, when they think of anthrax for some god awful reason, they think of like Bring the Noise and they think of I'm the Man, which are cool songs, but, but that's those are their anthrax. novelty songs, you know, yeah. That, that's not Anthrax. And, like, Anthrax has a sick rhythm section. I mean, Scott Ian is such a great guitar – like, just a great rhythm guitar player. He doesn't shred. He doesn't do any of that. Their drummer is just outstandingly under – he's just outstandingly underrated. What's that one song and, and about the just, Indians? I used to like that one. It's called Indians. That Indian song. <laughs> yeah, that, like that. yeah, Cry, for, that cry yeah. for the Indians. Yeah, that one I liked, and, and uh, I liked um... – uh, yeah, that other one. <laughs> now, I believe with with past conversations we've had, Guido, that uh, you are more on the John Bush side, which I find I offensive. 
that doesn't well, that doesn't make any sense. Why doesn't it make sense? Because they they were a different kind of a lot of the Joey Belladonna early songs. I couldn't stand the screech the way he sang it, and I like it better. I was never one of the high screeching voice. I always liked the lower voice, the register of like, I got up the state. And even James Hetfield, who was lower. I never liked that screaming metal vocal. Yeah, but so. the thing, that's what that's what made Anthrax stand out from all those bands. I mean, you, you're not just even talking about the three, the original three uh, thrash metal guys, or four, but besides Anthrax three, there's all the other ones. There was, you know, there's Exodus, all those kind of guys, Testament, but they all sound right. the same. Anthrax brought in a bona fide, awesome vocalist. This guy could go out there and sing Journey stuff if he, if he wanted. Journey's his biggest thing, but he's in a thrash metal band, and I think it's single-handedly, like, change the sound of music leading to like the late 90s rush of uh of power metal and and then today if you even listen to some of the metalcore stuff the singers have those high range of voices well, he's not even and I think the original singer yeah, this thing, yeah whatever you're sending me man my skype's not liking it so i'm not gonna have it tonight so next week i will be more than prepared i promise I promise I'll be prepared. All right. Our listeners, it, you get... be sure to download Antrax's new album. Yes, house. download it. iTunes from... or anywhere you can get uh, yeah. it. Also, you can catch it in our rotation at kgfrocks.com. So you can listen to it on our station as well. Okay. Woo. Woo. Okay. We got that going for us. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> My bad. That I'll take full responsibility for that one. So anyway, yeah, don't get, give me that look. Don't Good. give me that look. Okay. All right. I apologize. But anyway, I, we're going to have to bring our guest in. And um, either one of you staying with us or what? Oh, I'm going to bounce so that you guys can do your little interview. Okay, hon. Well, <laughs> it was certainly nice talking to you. It was and, nice uh, talking to you. And thanks thank- for having me on. It's always a blast. To okay. Check- Guys. Yeah, it's only a few minutes of your day, so that's nice. And I, you're not a mom, are you? No, I'm not, but I love my mom, so happy Mother's Day to my mom and all the mothers out there. Thank cool. you for everything that you guys do, because without mothers, well, none of us would be here. <laughs> well, you're appreciated, moms. All right. Well, you're appreciated, too, for coming on our show. Thank you so much for coming on board tonight. Well, thank you. You guys have a wonderful night and keep rocking. All right, hon. Good night. Bye-bye. Mwah. Adios. Adios. She's gone She's now. She's gone. She's gone. Are you going to stay with us there, gone. Jazz? Uh, I'm, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll hang up here and, and listen to you guys do your, your magic, but thanks for okay. bringing me on, and I hope everybody oh. out there does buy and sh- check out the album because it's really good. I wouldn't just be saying that. Um, and then... Uh, uh, we need to get uh, my review for next week, Dom. But before we do that, Guido, I want to say Happy Mother's Day to Mama Guido and Chaz. All right. Yeah. Cool. Cool. So yeah, next week, what are we doing? Andy Black's new CD. Andy Black's okay, new that's CD. Right. Okay. I couldn't remember. I, I know we talked about it. I got to write it down. Got it. And and, yeah. and that'll be in the event for next week. And I yeah. need you to send that to me early in the week so that I have that. Okay. And and right. and that way I have that and I know what I'm doing. All right. And thanks for coming on tonight, Jazz. You have a good night, man. All right. Thanks. Later, guys. Later. See ya. All right. That was a fun segment. There we talked about some stuff, some rock and roll, and that one that was cool. Very yeah, definitely. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Are so, you calling our esteemed guest now? I, I why don't am, you? I am. Why don't you play one of their songs? Well, and that's we'll exactly what I was going to do. You read my <laughs> mind. You're so on it, man. You're on top of shit, dude. No question about it. This is called Battle of Evermore. This is KGFRocks.com and the Conjugal Visit. Wow, that's a kick-ass tune. That's Delosier, and that's a. Uh, Battle of Evermore. Hey, how's it going, Rick? You down there with me? Yeah, brother, I'm here. Thanks for having me on tonight. Uh, no problem, man. My good friend Guido here is with you, and uh, and my uh, yeah, no, my friend. I'm sorry, I can't call you my good friend. No, no, um, there is no good friend. My partner in crime over there. That's Guido. <laughs> Guido's talking to you from Buffalo, New York, and I am in St. Louis, Missouri tonight. And uh, where where are we calling you at, man? 
I am in the beautiful little town of Shelby, North Carolina. North Shelby, Carolina. North Carolina. All right. So we're like all over the map tonight. Yeah, we got a big triangle going. That's it. We got a little triangle going on there. Not to be yeah. mean about it. But hey, uh, how's it going, man? What a kick ass song, man. Well, thanks. Thanks a lot. I'm, uh, we, you know, I've been working on this. As a matter of fact, that's what I'm doing right now. I'm here in the dungeon working on the very last song for the new CD release, which is called Battle of Forevermore. It'll be coming out probably here in July, somewhere, somewhere near the end of July. And we're real excited about it. You know, we love it. We're excited about everybody in the world getting to hear it, too. Yeah. 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 That's, that's, uh, 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 there's some good tracks. And I know we put a couple in our general rotation that will be played, um, Almost every single day. Wow! Thanks, so, guys. Man, you know, we got we got great. Uh, we got listeners from here to Germany. I mean, all over the place. So who knows? You know. <laughs> well, that'll be awesome because you know the, the, the my brother that sings on this uh, is in Germany. Oh, cool! Uh, Andreas Leier. Yeah, that's that's a real. There's a real backstory to this thing because of the way it's came together. This CD was meant to be a follow-up to the instrumental CD that I've done in 2015. And uh, I ran across Andreas and social media and uh, working together musically towards music promotion for promotional reasons, you know. And we were talking on Facebook one day, and he said, hey, man, if you ever want somebody to sing on any of your stuff, I'll be glad to do it. And I loved his work in his band called Sin Force out of Germany and another band that he sings with out of Germany called Black Angus. And I thought, well, you know, shoot, I've got the rhythms down to, to all this, all of the uh, whole CD and I saw him singing some of them. So I sent him about six songs and within a week, dude, he hit me back with some of the greatest lyrics and vocals I've heard in my life. Oh, wow. And yeah. And it's just been, it's just been real exciting ever since, you know I mean? We've, uh, like I said, we've about got this thing nailed down he recorded his vocals in Germany. I've done all the uh, instruments here in uh, the dungeon, which is my own studio. Check and it out, man. We, yeah, we, yeah, we're the only. We're not the only ones that, that broadcast from different parts of the world, man. They these guys put music together. Yeah, from all over the world. <laughs> these guys sends lyrics, and this guy sends music. They match it up and accomplish an entire album. That's amazing. Yeah, that is yeah. very amazing, and yeah. and that's. Uh, you know, in years past, that would have been painstakingly a long process. I'll send you the tapes in the mail. You send them back, you know. And now with uh, oh, yeah. the, the the revolution, internet revolution, you can do that in a day. You know, oh, listen, you Guido, that's the, this is amazing to me because, you know, I've, I've been recording since 1975. Mm-hmm. And if you had told me as a teenager in 75 that one day you would be able to record something, and put it onto a social media site, and somebody in Thailand will not only be able to hear it, but contact you on a social media website and say, "Hey, man, I love your music." Right. You, you would never have believed it, you know. Mm-hmm. And, no, and never. It's, it's a great thing. It really is a great thing, especially for independent artists. It, it, definitely for independent artists, and you know what? It gives uh, it, it gives the record companies less of the power now. You know, and uh, they're not as powerful as they used to be, the the record industry, you know. Well, uh, I think, you know, the facts bear themselves out that over the last few years, uh, the major industry sales have dropped and the independent sales have gone up. Right. Although it's although it's a gradual thing, I, in my own opinion, you know, I, I can see the day, maybe not in, not, not in the near future, but I can see the day when, uh, the independence will will probably gross as much, if not more. And I agree. And there's some independent artists that are making it through, you know, and uh, right. are becoming very, very successful. For and where in years past, uh, in the '70s and '80s, the record machine would kill these independent artists. You know, oh, sure. and, and they they can't do it anymore. You know, because well, you know, the, the the thing was, you know, back in the day, you, you couldn't afford the promotion to compete with them, right? And w- when you've got now, you know, Twitter, Facebook, Reverb Nation, you can sit here and name twenty one sites that you can go get on and hear independent music, and millions of people are there, and it's it's not as hard to compete with Warner Brothers and Sony and and the major right. labels. 
you know what I find interesting about these sites and going to listen to independent music and that it it's almost like you have your own choice to like w- music instead of uh, someone telling you what you should like, you know, and, right. and then you can listen to different genres of music because it's kind of cool now that we're years past. If you listen to rock, you, you didn't admit to listen to disco or anything else. You know, I mean, you, you right. you're stuck to your form, but now it's okay to like all kinds kinds of music, which is really cool in my book. Well, yeah, and, and metal in particular. I'm in that generation, you know, I'm fortunate enough to, to say I was I was alive for the birth of heavy metal and hard rock. Mm-hmm. I bought the first Black Sabbath album. Yeah. And when you when you look at where it came from and where it is and how it's spined out and fractured out into so many different styles of metal, from mm-hmm. symphonic to, to, you know, thrash even has, has this spread out there are so many different styles of metal now mm-hmm. that there's sure. you know it, it amazes me there's so much talent in music now too compared to what past days were you know and i agree and i think the metal scene of now is so much bigger than it was that oh you know, sure I, I mean it's huge the metal scene outdoes the hard rock scene i think right now well it, it does in my heart anyway you know, <laughs> I i've think always <laughs> I think it actually depends on where in the world you are. I, I think that they, I think that they understand metal better in Europe than folks do here in the United States. Well, Europe invented metal. <laughs> I mean, that's where the metal came from to begin right. with. You're right, Guido. Yeah. But I'm I'm thinking that a lot of metal bands that I know of they love going to Europe, man, because yeah. they hold these huge festivals where thousands of people come to these venues. Here in the United States, you go on tour, you do a little venue here, you get two or three hundred here, four hundred here, yeah. you know. Yeah. And but but I, you know, I think they really appreciate metal better in Europe than they do in the United States. Well, they do, and and you know, and metal did come from Europe, in my opinion. Black Sabbath, right? We can't we can all agree as like the Godfathers of heavy metal, correct? Right, right, but. I think that there's one European band before Black Sabbath that set the tone for heavy metal, and that was Cream when they did um, Wheels of Fire, because yeah. that's that was, very yeah. heavy, very heavy album for that time period. You know, for and its also, time, it was extremely heavy. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and same with a little bit of the older, not not the poppy stuff, but the stuff from Vanilla Fudge that was like. B sides yeah. stuff. B sides was a little heavy, yeah, but Black stuff Sabbath you never heard on the radio. took it and kicked it. I mean, made a whole genre. They really did. The Black yeah. Sabbath yeah. made heavy metal. Uh, there's no doubt about it. The the riffs that Tony did is still are still used today. Absolutely, and and the whole the whole idea of writing off of riffs mm-hmm. really came from that, you know. And and a lot of guys still write that way. I mean, a lot of heavy metal is riff type metal. It's just based on riffs that you come up with. It, and it's funny, you know. Look, even before that, there were bands that were. You know, there's always been an underground scene, and I was always one of those kids that bought stuff out of the bargain bin and yeah, the import yeah, bin yeah. at the record store. Nobody and else you ran buy into it. those. You ran into those bands like Blue Chair, yeah, that yeah, a lot of people true. don't even know about. That was like Spirit, you know, it Spirit Blue blew Cheer. my mind when I yeah. first heard it. When I heard yeah. Blue Cheer, the first time I heard Blue Cheer, I saw them in uh, Springfield, Illinois. That was the first time. I, was, I think I was like seventeen or eighteen. I went. We went to Springfield, Illinois, to see Blue Cheer, and summertime blues just blew off the stage. I mean, these guys just oh, man, rattled it, man. And um, uh, shit, that was a long time. That was 1973, 1974. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's, that's and, the first concert story you told where you didn't mention the word window pane. No, no. And, and you know what? We didn't have any either. <laughs> there was a lot of happy smoke ro- floating around, but there wasn't any LSD at that show. And there should have been because Blue Cheers per- was perfect for that. And um, I, I, But I will tell a funny quick funny story i went to the dentist when i was in the navy and this guy was really cool he was really a cool dentist and he goes what would you like to listen to and i said oh, i don't know i'm thinking he's got frank sinatra he's got whatever you know boot, these boots are made for walking kind of thing and i look over and sure enough he's got blue cheers stacked right there i said yeah you can put that in he goes really and i said yeah he's like, awesome kick it in and it was an eight track player so i'm i'm giving you my age wow. but yeah, we popped yeah. that tape in, and he went to work and pulled two wisdom teeth. So uh, he was a rocking dentist, but I, I'll never forget that. And, but anyways, getting back to the music part of it, the, the um, 
do you think that there's been a, I don't know, maybe there's um, a, a cha- there's definitely a change in that style of music compared to what's coming out today. But when I listen to your album, I get a little mm-hmm. bit of that older feel to it. There's a couple of tunes that I, I get this older feel to, man. Is there is, is that on purpose, Rick? Uh, no. I, you know, with me, I'll be honest with you, I, I've always said, I used to think that everybody had this happen to them, but it's not true. A lot of us do, though. I've got this thing you call the brain radio. You know, it, you always hear the music in your head right. okay. constantly. And Better for a lot of people, you know, they talk about you get that song in your head and you can't get rid of it. For right. me, I've I've wrote music in all for so long now, I'm constantly whipping up stuff in my head. And just to be honest with you, whatever comes out when I pick the guitar up or whatever instrument I use to record comes out. And if it's heavy metal, it's metal. If it's jazz, it's jazz. You know, you know if it's on a classical guitar, it's probably going to be classical, right. that sort of thing. Well, uh, mm-hmm. it, it, it's, it's just a part of your soul that you're laying down. Sure, more or less. right. It's better than voices in your head and better than having to answer them, right? True. Better, yeah. better to have that music than, than voices so, so, in your head. So being from North Carolina, <laughs> do you have any uh, Southern rock or country uh, influence on in your music? Well, uh, actually, I started out in this business at the age of eight playing bluegrass music for a square dance hall with oh, a cool. relative of mine. Yeah. And uh, I've done that until uh, I was about 11 years old. So way before I was doing uh, rock stuff, uh, I, I was learning bluegrass. My first real guitar influences were, of course, Hendrix. And uh, Johnny Winter was a huge influence oh, on me. Sure. I was a yeah. huge Johnny Winter fan. And uh, an extremely huge Richie Blackmore fan. I just, as, as a kid, I thought Blackmore was God. And yeah. uh, I spent a lot of time trying to learn how to play like Richie. Nobody gives Ricky, Richie Blackmore credit, and I agree with you. He's, uh, he is he's amazing. the most yeah. underrated out of the three big ones, Jimmy Page, Tony, and him. He's the most underrated one, and I think he's the best, actually. Well, you know, it's it, it's amazing because uh, uh, you can listen to some of the greatest guitar players in the world right now, Ingvay Malmsteen, and, and there's a whole host of players in that vernacular that mm-hmm. it, it's those licks are Blackmore licks, you know? I right. mean, those are Blackmore arpeggios. Those are Blackmore sweeps. It's just done. It's like it's on steroids. That's all. Right. You know? right. <laughs> it's, but it's, it's Blackmore to the core. Yeah, and I'm sure it's got to bug him that his most famous song is the easiest song he played, Smoke on the Water. You know? <laughs> yeah. It was like it's practice riff, you know? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Did you get a chance to catch any of the uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame uh, that was out? That's out there now. Did you can catch it live, or do, are you into that kind of thing? Uh, well, I'll be honest with you guys. Uh, basically, um, it's music all day for me. Uh, okay. When I'm not out gigging, if I'm at home, if I'm not out traveling to play or whatever, if I'm at home, I'm right here in the dungeon. It's all about creating music and working on music all day long. I don't watch a lot of TV. I might turn on uh, one of the crappy news channels long enough to see what's going on in the world. And if I happen to watch TV, it's probably going to be in TV Live or Access or something like that. I'm I'm one of those people that is just a passionate music freak and and dedicated to it. And and I love it, you know. That's just what I love to do with myself. Kick ass. Kick ass. So what what, what kind of guitar do 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 you play? Uh, what's the name brand on it? Well, currently, uh, what was used on this album was a Paul Reed Smith Custom 24. I also have one of the original uh, Ibanez Joe Satriani models. Oh, cool. That's uh, one of the first year models. I've got another custom Ibanez here. A Schecter Zachary Vengeance, uh, 57 Stratocaster reissue. And uh don't think that we used the West Paul on this one. We ran some Marshall cabinets and some custom modified P V Valve Kings. Oh. Uh, pretty much so you, that's so you about don't it. have a you don't have a brand of choice, just whatever sounds good to you and makes that song sound better. I actually you know it's a it's a strange thing because for me, uh my playing style tends to change based on what I pick up. I, I tend to veer one way or another if I'm playing a Les Paul or if I'm playing a Stratocaster. 
But Paul Reed Smith, I started mm-hmm. using because I, I'm able to get any tone I want out of it. I can get mm-hmm. the same tone I get from my Strat or my Les Paul. And uh, I just seem to do a lot more with it. The Satriani model has done, oh, God, uh, 18 years on the road with me. Oh, wow. And and it's about it's about retired now. You know, <laughs> I've played it so much I feel sorry for it. It's got too many miles on it. <laughs> nice. Well, that's a you know those are all nice guitars. The Paul Reed Smith guitars are not shitty cheap guitars. They're well built. I mean, pieces of equipment. They're oh, I love them. Yeah, I love they're, them. they're all they're, they're, you. But you get what you pay for. You know, you buy a piece of shit, you're gonna sound like shit. You know, and uh, I don't care what people say. Different guitars do, and I like. I if I was a guitar player, I want. I'd, I'd want that if I could afford them, handmade ones. You know what I mean? Not machine pressed in Japan, whatever, you know, but who can afford that shit, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's I not mean, that I hard. I mean, you know, I've, I've got a couple, I've got one strat sitting here that, that, uh, we built mm. and I've, I'm lucky, man. I've got a, I've got a great guitar guy here in, in Shelby. That's a, a qualified luthier and he does all the work on my guitars. He, his name's Randy Saxon. He takes care of them and, uh, keeps the frets filed down for me and polished. I mean, you know, he just, he treats my babies like they're his babies. And, and uh, it's nice to have a guy like that around. Yeah, that's, I, I, I was trying to build a guitar once and I, I got the stuff and then, yeah, I stopped because I'm lazy and, you know, don't work out too well. <laughs> it didn't work out too well. <laughs> but I, I got the stuff. I had, but one day. I guess, you know. So this is the first No, thing- I'm like a goldfish. I'll start something and then I'm like, oh, Go ahead. <laughs> this is the first <laughs> guest. Uh, this is the first uh, single guest that we've had on that was not directly influenced by Kiss. There, Guido. Well, if we didn't ask him his influences. Yeah, we did. <laughs> he just gave. He just gave some up. What do you think of the rock band Kiss? Well, you know, actually, man, uh, I was such a music fanatic, probably just like you guys. I was influenced by everything I heard. Thank don't you. think I don't think I didn't go back and listen to uh don't think I didn't buy the, the Kiss albums like Dress to Kill and, yeah. and Hotter Than Hell was a great album by the way. Yeah. Uh, the See, early now that Kiss stuff really awesome. likes Kiss because because people that say Hotter Than Hell the album was fucking horribly produced, but it's got some of their best songs on it. But Yeah, oh yeah. Definitely. But but see the thing of it is is I'm 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 a New Yorker. It's Kiss. They're New York. I don't <laughs> like Kiss. You know, it's like uh, almost like a New Yorker's got to like the Yankees, which I don't. But it, it, that's like the, that's like the rule in New York. You got to like Kiss, and you got to like the Yankees. You know, you gotta like, and you got to like the Yankees, right? Yeah. <laughs> but, but no, no, no lie. They were influential on me. You know, and uh, I could still you know remember every time I seen them when I was a kid. And I was a young kid in the seventies. I was born because of a Led Zeppelin concert, so that's how young I am. So yeah, <laughs> that's actually and, pretty cool, dude. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it was just, my parents <laughs> were cool. huge. I mean, when I was like nine or 10 years old, I'd be sitting in the living room listening to Black Sabbath and Jeff Tall with my mom and Led Zeppelin and all this stuff. And, you know, I grew up with the hard rock. So when like Metallica and all those guys came out, it was just like, it wasn't like, oh my God, what are these guys? Like, I already was listening to heavy, you know, heavier music. I mean, yeah. who else was heavier than Black Sabbath at the time up till I think uh, Sabotage was the last album for me in the 70s that was heavy. The last two, Technical Ecstasy and um, Never Die, I never thought they were, uh, I don't know, you know. But those first five albums, six albums, were some of the best music come out of the 70s, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, you said you were doing square dance music. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I got to ask you, man. I got to ask you. Sure, bro. Where... Uh, what were you? Th- was there a lot of? Let me ask you this. I, now I'm going to get come around the corner on this. Um, was there a lot of gospel music around you at that time? Well, my dad was a Southern Baptist minister. Ah, that's what I had a hunch. And, man. Until I had a hunch. until I was until I was about nine years old. Okay. And uh, my mother was a cotton mill worker. Uh, okay. My father has passed home. My mother's still alive. Uh, there was a lot of gospel music around me. There was a lot of um, there was a, a lot of uh, southern influence type Appalachian music. But uh, I also, you know, for me, uh, I was lucky to to have had a mother mostly that that uh, 
influenced me to try different things and listen to different things. I got into classical music at an early age. I got into blues. I'm a huge blues fan, uh, dating back to the Howlin' Wolf, Muddy Waters era, uh, even as far back as some of the old Lead Belly stuff. I'm just a huge music fan in general. I, I love all styles of music. You know? Okay. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. There's not a thing wrong with that. And it's a great influence. It actually uh, has music that moves and tells a story. So, yeah. uh, you know, and gospel tells a story, and, and hell, so does bluegrass. In a lot of cases, you know, uh, someone yeah. robbed the Dan Will train and uh, uh, all, that <laughs> older, all that older stuff, you know, uh, uh, it w- was a part of um, uh, rockabilly. Is that what it's called? Rockabilly? And, uh, well, uh, I well and basically, basically, too, uh, you know, hey, this is the South, and, and we never pass up an opportunity in this area to break out acoustics and jam and drink white liquor. Yeah, that <laughs> I think that's a lot of what bluegrass was all about. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And 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 I think I think when you when you when you float on that a little while, man, and you look around and say, "Wow, man, uh, that that must be uh, that's got to be fun as hell." To just you know, even yeah. as an outsider from that, and, and I've seen that live. I've seen that. Uh, for real, but you know, if I were to go back and say, you know, uh, I have a brother that lives in North Carolina, and, and if I were to go back out there and we sat around the fire with a bottle of White Lightning, and and you guys picked up acoustic guitars and told stories and played music, man, that would be incredible. That I, I yeah. to me, that's what I that's what I'd like to do. That <laughs> and get that done. <laughs> but but when you when you come across with your with this rock that you're doing now, this this heavy metal that you're you're doing now. Um, sure. do you, you don't, you are looking forward, aren't you? Always. Uh, uh, the, the thing is, um, uh, for me, once again, whatever comes out, comes out, but it's, it, to me, every year that I put out a CD, sometimes two a year, if you can't do better than you did last time, it's a failure. Right. You understand what I'm saying? I mean, you, there, it's it's got to improve. It's got to expand. It's got to it's got to live and breathe. It's got to be a product that goes further than the last one, and uh, that's that's what I like to do. You know? Right, right. Well, you've got a, you've got a uh, an individual sound. Uh, that's that's really good, and uh, it's kind of uh, thanks, man. I, I really appreciate that. Oh no, not a problem, man. I, I enjoy. I sat here and listened to the, uh, all of the songs that you released to me, and uh, mm-hmm. for for the most part, all of them are very good, and uh, it shows a whole lot of talent, man. It shows a whole well, lot thanks. of talent. Yeah, and, and now you call your studio the dungeon. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I, kind of expand on that. What goes down in that dungeon, man? What goes on down there, man? Honestly, it's just uh, basically because I do all the recordings myself. It's just a small room here in the back of the house. We got some blankets hanging up and uh, all the home studio gear sitting here, some uh, drums. Uh, got my amps in here. It's just barely. The room's basically uh, also an upright piano. It's okay. barely big enough to hold everything, and uh, and so really, I mean, uh, I can come in here and and record by myself. And uh, there have been occasions I brought vocalists in here and recorded, but it's uh, just a small room, and I've always called it the dungeon because uh, at one point in time, somebody made a remark. It was like I was pinned up in the dungeon down here working all the time, you know? yeah. and That's we cool. we picked it up and started calling it the dungeon. Yeah, but I, I used to have a dungeon or a man room, man cave, whatever. And I don't have. I don't have. I, I don't have a man. I, I've got. I'm in my man cave. This is my studio, and yeah. um, you know, I got a computer, and it's a. Believe me, you know, the monkey's getting tired in this computer. I got to get a new one. I keep saying I got to get a new computer, but I never do. You've been hearing that for two years. <laughs> <laughs> but two years you've been in that. Yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> so so what's is there com- anybody out today? Oh, so you- go ahead, go ahead. Is there anybody out today that you, uh, in the metal world, that you like? 
there are a lot of bands out today in the metal world that I like uh, because I like so many different vernaculars. Uh, you know, I was I was always a huge Judas Priest, Iron Maiden, Ronnie James Dio type fan in the eighties mm-hmm. and all. And uh, to see some of the the bands that have expanded on that, uh, especially uh, a lot of the bands that I'm hearing come from Brazil are amazing. I mean, I'm hearing some amazing heavy heavy metal that comes out of Brazil. Uh, but some of the, the symphonic metal that I hear, Serenia, Nightwish, uh, I think a lot of that is real creative. I'm a huge Dream Theater fan, needless to say. Um, it's not a ba- bad always. band to fan of. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, Camelot, that's another great band. Uh, Camelot. Oh. Seventh Wonder is one of the greatest bands in the world, in my opinion. Uh, and and they of course are part of the European metal deal, mm-hmm. but uh, there's there's just a lot. I mean, there's a lot of great metal out there. There's a lot of great music out there, and it's not all label stuff. You know, there's a lot right. of great independent in bands out there. And that's the thing: people amazing. need to expand their horizons. Don't don't just listen to what comes on your local radio station because there's so much more beyond that. You know. Oh no, and and to me, you don't you don't really hear the heart of of the music scene today. If you're listening to your FM radio going down the road, you're just not going to hear it because there's still right. that that commercial edge type thing that they have in all vernaculars of music that, right. to, to where you know only mainstream metal is going to sure. be on the radio. But and the really it, creative you, stuff, the real soul of the movement, is on independent radio on internet. It is, and you know what I, I said, you know, to my partner here, if we were ever like on FM radio, we would be the number one station. And the thing of it is, is I don't get it. Okay, advertisement, how much money do they need to make, you know? Yeah. I mean, let's. the radio was invented to play music, not not to play the music that the record company says you should play. That's why I miss the old guy. Remember the old rebel DJs that would just play whatever they wanted and – didn't yeah. care and in oh, yeah. the fifties and then Alan Freed and all them guys. Those guys are the pioneers. Those, well, they got payola too, though. But anyway, you know, uh, there was an awful <laughs> yeah. lot of there was an yeah. awful lot of cocaine on the on the turntable, yeah. man. I mean, that, that, <laughs> you know, that, hey, there was a lot of payola going on back then. And, sure, sure. You know, and and, and, the, and there still is, but it's a different way because we're going to give you Coca Cola saying to you, we're going to give you ten million dollars, but you can't play this. That's fucking payola. Well, yeah, right. that's that's backward payola. Right. But it's you know, still there's it. that there, there's that uh, underground producer that walks into a, a studio in the dead of the night with this night DJ and say, "Hey, look, if you put this on, here, here, I got a couple lines for you, and here's fifty bucks, okay." And they put it on, and and you know, th- those bands they could have done better. Right. They could have done better. Um, but uh, when you get this image of of, of 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 WKRP in Cincinnati, nah, it was corporate even back then. Oh, it was always corporate. It was always corporate. The you know even the fifties though were different because the DJs were the ones getting paid, not the radio. Stations. Yeah. See, that's the thing is, is like the the um, re- producers or whatever were catching these DJs outside of the studios and saying, "Hey, here here's the money." So it, they were actually playing, you know, anything. They were playing not big label stuff too. They were playing whatever anybody would pay them to play. So. The independent market in the 50s was a lot bigger than it was in the 60s and 70s. You can check through all the number one hits of the 50s, and I guarantee you a vast majority of them are by small independent record labels. Oh, yeah. Like uh, Richie Valens was Delphi. They were the only band. He was the only fucking band they ever had. But it was an independent record label that had a number one hit because of the payola stuff. Yeah. So now it's almost the same way. Independent record labels, independent bands, and independent radio – we're not getting paid, but we're right. taking over the corp. We're we're fighting against the big machine. Yeah, we are. We are, and, and that's that's what that was. It. That that leads into my next question for uh, for Rick. Rick, uh, what do you think of internet radio? We're an internet radio station, KGFRocks dot com. Mm-hmm. What do you think of right. internet radio, man? Well, you know. Uh... For a while, I had run the, the label Rock Hard Distributors. Uh, we're not on the internet right now. We'll be back in a couple of weeks. But 
for the last four years, I had promoted 180 bands, independent bands. And I've been in contact with, I don't know, God, several thousand independent uh, internet radio stations. And it didn't take me long to figure out what kind of, of movement the internet radio thing is, thanks to Spreaker and, and several other domains that you can, you know, you can do radio shows on. Uh, I'm amazed at the number of people that are actually listening to internet radio. And when you start looking at the facts and figures on it, uh, and the actual statistics, uh, it doesn't, it really doesn't take you long to realize that it's, it's headed in that direction. You know, it's, it's all headed in that direction because so many people are living vicariously on the internet anyway. And, and the internet is their, like, that's their main place. That's where they're going right. to be all day long, you know. Right. And they're going to, you know what? They're fighting us back, though, because the licensing board that we pay royalties to, this last year raised our rates by 400%. Yeah, I know about that. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, what? Because they realize that the, it didn't, not us, not KGF, but the internet radio, independent radio network that we are is, Better than terrestrial FM radio, and yep. they're not making money off of it. You can still take me anywhere you want to go. You can take me on your phone. You can take me anywhere. You can take that station anywhere in the world, and uh, and, and we've got the statistics to prove it. the The only thing that is different from us and them is they're actually being paid millions of dollars to stay on the air. And I, th- I think it's unfortunate for bands like Delosier and these other bands. Your only avenue right up front is going to be on where are you going to distribute? Are you going to go to Reverb or uh, where are you going to do your, uh, your your record sales at? Have you decided yet, Rick? Well, I always do. Basically, I do downloads from the web, my own website. Okay. But we also, we do we do things a little bit differently, or I do. I go on CD Baby and sell on CD Baby, and I do a lot of physical sales at shows, and I also put them in some stores here in the Carolinas. I have not been able to expand beyond that because as an independent, you've got to be able to go to that place. So if you distribute to a bunch of stores in Colorado and something comes up and you have to go there, you got a trip to make. Right, right. But... Uh, but uh, I usually put the CDs on CD Baby for about six months. I don't stream them immediately because once you start streaming, uh, any income that was coming in is gone. Right. But just to be honest with you guys, even though things change, for me, they're really still the same. I still sell the bulk of my CDs. Uh, Physically. Face to face. That's a show. You know, you go out you go out on break and you you shake hands and you meet people just like you did in nineteen eighty five, nineteen eighty, you know, it's right, the same right. old thing. People still wanna meet you, they wanna shake hands, they wanna know who you are, they wanna see that C D, they wanna buy it, you know. And that's what we're and it's doing. Because you get you've got that relationship thing unless, with them and, and unless you're important. Axel Rose, I don't want to meet you if you're Axel Rose. <laughs> yeah, well, well yeah. I'd love to interview him. I really no, he's would. a douchebag. No. no, I'd love to ask him some questions. He wouldn't answer the questions I've got for him. But he, yeah, he'd probably <laughs> ask us if we had food. Yeah. <laughs> I thought there was going to be food here. Yeah. I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know what's sad about it is I was a huge Guns N' Roses fan in the 80s, like so many people, you know. And uh, I, I just got sick of waiting for that stupid piece of shit album, you know. <laughs> But fuck him, I gave up on him, you know. Yeah. It, well, it, it's And it's like so many did, I think. Now I hear they're going to not do the stadium tour because they're not going to be able to fill the venue, so they're going to do small arena tours now. Yeah, well, next they'll be doing carnivals. So mm-hmm. anyway, uh, because they're a tribute band. They're not ACDC. As far as I'm concerned. I'm talking about a, the actual Guns N' Roses. It's well, Guns N' Roses yeah. is you know remains to be seen. I don't think he can do both, but that's just my opinion. I really don't. I think he's he's just, and he's got a broken leg. And he's got a broken leg. How's he going to pull this off? But anyway, Rick, when um, so the the new album comes out when? We're looking around the end of July. The release is around the end of July. We're going around doing radio interviews right now, magazine interviews. 
getting a little awareness out there about it with everybody. But it's coming up soon here, mid end of summer in July, probably end of July, I'd say. Okay, cool. And cool. The, the name of it is um, you picked the name, right? For the Battle of Forevermore. That's yeah, right. And, and for, what, uh, what are the um, like that song? How did how did you come up with that? How did I come up with the name or the song? I mean, no. What is the, the, the no? What is the, I know the song. What is like the inspiration behind you doing that song? Well, basically, uh, it's the way I the way I came up with that is is just like I just like I said earlier. You know, you just start laying down ideas, and as it started taking shape, I usually don't name the instrumentals until they're finished, and it's just kind of one of those crazy things where you just shut your eyes and say, okay, hey. That's that's what I see, you know. So yeah, yeah. you name it, I named it Battle of Forevermore. And, uh, uh, and, and there was no window pane involved in that either. No window pane involved. No. Okay, that's always good. <laughs> that's always good. Now, 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 this next song, this song that I'm going to play next, um, uh, Through the Storm. Uh, yeah. What? Uh, give us an idea on this one. Is there? It just it just flowed like everything else, or was there something different about this song? No, it's it's just uh for me, like I said, I, I just sat down and started working in a direction with an idea, and they all came out that way. You know, that's how I do them all. And uh, this this one is uh, one of my favorites on the CD, one of my personal favorites on the CD because I'm a big sweet picking freak, and right. uh, I get to do a lot of sweet picking in this one. So I okay. like this one a lot. Okay, well, we're going to get right to it, man. Um, we're talking with Rick Delosier, and we'll be back with Rick uh, right after this. This is Delosier and Through the Storm. KGFrox.com. You're listening to the Conjugal Visits. Yeah, kick ass <laughs> tune, man. Kick ass tune. Very nice. That's a rocking song. Bye. Yeah, that's a, that is a rocking song, and, and um, uh, the uh, the whole album is kick ass. And we've got you want some Delosier? We got it in our rotation, man. And right. you just go to kgfrocks.com, and you can go in and request the song, the the name of the band, and the song, and it'll play for you. you got to give it a few minutes, but it'll play for you. So it's well, it we got this thing called technology now. And yeah. uh, everybody seems to think that, you know, everybody out there, I want you to know that if you've never listened to KGFrocks.com, uh, I want to give us a plug here. Um, KGFrocks.com uh, is, you know, everybody says, oh, you always play, you know, you're playing music that you want me to hear. No, you can go in and request a song anytime you want. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter to us and it doesn't cost you a penny. So everything we do at KGFrocks.com is free. All right. right. All right. And, so. and we play like from friggin' the Beatles all the way to the Black Veil Brides. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mean, you know, and yeah. Yeah. Everything in between. And that that's the thing here, Rick, is there's no – like for me, and I know Free Ride too, I never got into, oh, that's punk. Oh, that's metal. Oh, that's rock. Oh, that's, uh, you know, screamo. That's his. No, it's got a guitar. I, I fucking like it. It's rock, you know. It's rock, right. And, and that's what we have. We just have everything. Yeah. And we have the, the well-known signed bands, but we got tons of independent bands, too. Tons of them. And uh, we add more independent bands almost every single day because sooner or later, I think we're just going to exist as an independent station because it might be the cheaper route to go for all of us. you know. Mm, <laughs> and uh, sure. and um, I'm okay with that because I want to be part of, of the new music going forward. You know what I mean? And lately, the music coming out, these independent bands, I like better than the shit that's on the radio. Matter of fact, I like Delosier just fine. And yeah. you're not, you know, and, and unfortunately, Rick, I mean, okay, you put it on a CD Baby, you know, and, yeah. and, and the album hits like number one. That's when things mm -hmm. can really take off, right? I mean, for, for an album, not just for sure. the artist, but for the album. I mean, that's sure, yeah. The, the, the thing today uh, with modern sales being the way they are, you know, as an independent and somebody who's been releasing independent stuff for a long time, with the way the market is today and the way people are buying and not buying today, if you do 1,500 CDs, you're doing really good, you know? Really, yeah. 
And, wow, yeah, uh, I hear you. And 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 the, you know, there's a really dark side to all this, and 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 uh, unless you're really dedicated and willing to make some sacrifices and and realize that there's not going to be a lot of money coming out of it unless right. you go do the live performances, you know. Um, there's just not, there's not a lot of people buying stuff. No, there's uh, not. And, and, and it's not just that side of it. The artists, I mean, we're getting kicked in the shin by our own companies like BMI. You know, I've been a BMI member since the 70s. Right. And I can promise you, I mean, uh, I've got stuff from last year's CD that's been on oodles and oodles of radio stations that I know pay the royalty mm. fee. Right. Yet you don't recoup them. Uh, BMI recoups them, obviously, but we don't seem to see all of our money. And uh, so it's a, it's a tough thing, you know, and you just right. can't really count on a whole lot of uh, CD or album sales because a lot of people are doing vinyl now. But, uh, you know, it's it's still a great promotional tool, and, and the heart of rock music always has been the live show, and sure. it always will be, you know. Yeah, it is. And, you know, I also think that's why BMI and ASCAP and them did raise internet radios royalties because there was too many people out there. Anybody could do it. Anybody could do it. It was inexpensive. Anybody can do it. So there was too sure. many of them to 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 track. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know. So now, only the ones that still survive. There's a lot, a lot, a lot less of us now. And uh, yeah, we're paying them more money, but. Now I think that you have the opportunity to be able to track things better, you know. And I, I don't. That's probably a good for them, but for us, it freaking sucks, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They, well, they and for us, it that. sucks because, like, like I said, for us, it sucks because we don't ever really recoup all of those royalties that we right. should, you know. I mean, they, you know, there have been hearings in Congress about this in the last year. Sure. Uh, I've gotten, uh, I've gotten letters in my email. Uh, I've gotten emails, I should say from watchdog groups that uh, are other members of BMI that are trying to make you aware of what's going on. Uh, mm -hmm. Some of the big name stars, even Prince before he died, had sent out a newsletter to BMI members about, you know, what was going on and everything. A lot of people were talking about it, even uh, country artists really? like that's, Merle that, Haggard. That's friggin' interesting, man. That, I, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I mean, that is... That, you know what? They, they were going to bat not only for themselves because right. you know they're not getting what they feel they deserve from BMI, mm -hmm. but now BMI has raised rates across the board to everyone, uh, as, and especially us internet radio. And you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna be honest with you, man. Uh, internet radio plays the stuff that those terrestrial stations that are owned by corporations don't play. It's not that they don't want to play them; they can't. Yeah. They're not allowed yeah. to. And that's why they can't keep track of Rick's music because there's so many out there exactly. playing. They don't have have enough employees to keep it up. Right. So now they're trying to raise the rates to lessen right. us, which is bullshit, you know. Which is bullshit, right? Well, and, and it's not it's not just in the radio uh, side of it because if you go to BMI right now and you join BMI, they will encourage you to join something called BMI Live, which makes absolutely no sense to me. Uh, first of all, as when you, and, and I'm sure people, a lot of people misunderstand this. When you sign up with BMI, you're not copywriting your material. Right. Your material is only officially copyrighted when it goes to the Library of Congress. What you're doing is basically getting somebody to handle your mechanical rights. And the, the thing that shocks me now is when you go to BMI, they try to get you in this thing called BMI Live. And guys, what BMI Live is, is they want the band to report clubs that are not paying fees huh. for copy tunes that are, be play, that are being played in their clubs. Oh, now, man. if you're a band and you're stupid enough to fall for that idea, you might as well cut off your foot. Because yeah. you're, I mean, you know, you're biting the hand that feeds you. That's yeah. where your money's coming from. And here's this large entity like BMI that's encouraging you to rat them out. Right. Yeah. Well, here's, yeah. here's my thing for that. Fucking stop paying all your CEO, CEOs all that money. Hire more people and go track the shit yourself. You set the damn company up to track all this stuff. Either get on sure. with it or close your damn business. You know, stop well, trying yeah. to make... Yeah. It, it, 
it's not trying to make the bands do your work for you try to you know lead us it's not right go change your business structure do something i don't understand i don't i really don't i i have a hard time understanding how they could be such a monopoly on all oh, they're of, not. There's BMI, there's ASCAP, there's CSAC. There's, but uh, there are certain things you know. that BMI has that ASCAP doesn't have. And I'm yeah. sure that they hold a lot more paper, as it were, than those others do. They are the, the main guys. I, I'm, yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe it's not a monopoly, but I think it's... not it's, a monopoly, yeah. I think it, it's it, overpowering, man. It, it's and they different. hold all the cards. They the BMI is cards. definitely the oldest one, I think, Rick. I, b- I believe. And uh, yes, it is. And, and the thing is, it's, it's just like the uh, record companies of the '80s. If you stop and think about it, it's just like that. Mm-hmm. There was the main handful of record companies, CBS, and then you had subsidiaries off right. of that. You, you had right. Warner, and you had subsidiaries. That's off how of that Sony. That that's how Sony started. Out. That's how Sony started. They were a subsidiary. I guess of um, well, hell, they, weren't they a subsidiary of of CBS Records, and then no, they ended so up Sony, like, yeah. Then they end up. Yeah, I think something? so. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I think uh, I I I think definitely things have changed. Okay, but were were there independent artists back then? But we just never got uh, well, the know, chance I, to hear. I laugh now because of being my age and being in this as long as I have. I laugh now when I see things on the internet about how to sell your CDs. You know, all these little info things that people try to sell you, uh, music right. marketing and all that. I right. can think back and remember in the late seventies and early eighties when the self help books were a big deal. You know, oh yeah, right. and it was like how to record your own album what to do to, to press your album, how to sell your album, how to get your album in the distribution. It just didn't, back then you didn't have the social media uh, blitz that hit you about, you know, with so many companies that wanted your, wanted to make your CD and that sort of thing. Right. Uh, but it's, it's really, it's just a larger scale. It's the same game for an independent, I think, that it, that it was in 1975, you know. Right. It's it's a lot more work for an independent because uh, certainly you know you you've got to. It, I think one of the things that happens to sidetrack for a minute. One of the things that happens to us. You know, I'm a musician. Uh, six hours a day, I've got a guitar in my hand, minimum mm-hmm. six hours a day, and and I've done that all my life since I was four years old. And I'm not alone. There's there's thousands of guys like me, thousands thousands of people like me. And we spend all of our time learning notes and phrases and techniques and how to play an instrument. And the one thing we don't learn is the business. Mm-hmm. We're business stupid, most of us. When we're young and we first get in this, we're business stupid. And, you, you know, to sell a CD or, or a T-shirt or anything else, if you can sell a bar of soap, if, if you can sell a box of cereal, it's all the same. It's the same thing. It's the same sales funnel. It's the same sales and marketing idea. Mm -hmm. But it takes us a while to grasp onto that because, once again, we spend all our life trying to learn this instrument and be great at what we do, you know. Right. And and it's a great downfall for many independents. It is. And, you know, you you trust, you hire, you know, you become a band and you get signed and then you hire a manager and you, you expect all these people to take care of you. And sometimes they do. But most times they just fucking screw you over and uh, oh, yeah. then yeah. you're out of money, you know, so yeah. it, it becomes the game. It's, it's a business. And that's the sad part about it. It's the music business and, and, and oh, band, yeah. bands that are famous and say, oh, we don't do it for the money. Then fucking stop taking the money. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I mean, it's it's crazy because it's the business and it, and it shouldn't yeah. be. But it is, you know. Don't, yeah. Don't don't lie to me. It, it, OK, it's fun. And you don't you do it because it's fun, um, but when it comes to the work, uh, you don't like it so much. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And, and then it's like, wow, I didn't know it was going to be this hard. Even, um, um, you know, even guys like Mick Jagger, you know, he said when he was younger, a lot younger. This was back in, I, I guess it was the end of the '70s. He said, "He said I didn't know it was going to be this hard work <laughs> because they they were touring. I mean, they were touring and they had shows 250 nights a year. 
Right. And and they were doing shows every week and twice a week, three times a week, and in different cities. And he and he just told the interviewer he was talking to. He said, "I had no idea it was going to be this hard." Well, Nikki and, Six from Motley Crue once said they asked why he became a musician. He said, "So I can do drugs and bang women." Great, yes. That's awesome. Well, now you're, yeah. now you're talking about the '80s, though, and that was a totally different era. Trust me. Oh, yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah, it was completely <laughs> different. He was completely, <laughs> completely honest. different. You were, you know, you were just coming off of the late seventies disco free love era, yeah, and, yeah, and you know, yeah. look what it morphed into, right? It morphed into cocaine, and 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 <laughs> yeah. it, it went from LSD bad to hair. cocaine and bad hair. Yeah, you lots know, look, of guys, we're we're laughing, but but I remember when when that when it first came around, you know, cocaine was a miracle yeah. drug. Doctors yeah. and lawyers were it doing was, it at work it, and everything it was else. Cheap. It was cheap to get, and uh, <laughs> everybody <laughs> had it. Like in the seventies yeah. and eighties, you went to a, a record a meeting at a record label. They laid the lines out for you at the, in the meeting, you know. Yeah. And, oh yeah, you yeah. go to the you go to the club, and the clubs would just turn a blind eye to it. You're doing lines on the table. It breaking out the lines on the table and, and snorting it up and drinking martinis for Christ's sake. Yeah, that is one thing that has changed a lot over the years. You know, in my early days, I started going out and traveling and playing. Uh, uh, in '79, I worked for Southern Talent Incorporated, and uh, which was a booking agency that booked us all over the United States, and uh, been doing it ever since. It, during, I can say that during the hair band years of, from 80 to 89, 90, the treatment a band got when it pulled into town, in a, in a, especially if you happen to be lucky enough to own a bus, was totally different from what it is now. There was, uh, you got paid pretty well, but you got treated like kings. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't ever remember buying a drink during those, those eras because, you know, People people really went out of their way to take care of you and treat you like uh, a king. Nowadays, you have that, but the money in this business, for somebody like me that does it for a living, you know, I go out every week, sometimes play three nights, sometimes five nights a week with copy bands. You travel hours and hours away from home to do it, and the money has gotten smaller and smaller, and unfortunately for some of the uh, really nice venues, just like uh, just like it is out west, it's made it all the way over to the east coast now. It's a pay to play thing, you know. Yeah, absolutely. It's been pay to play in in New York for a long time. And yeah, it, and, it sucks, and, and it does. It, it sucks. And uh, I know with me, like with the Leisure Project, uh, my own stuff. Uh, I'm fortunate enough to have some halls here around me in North Carolina that I can rent and just kind of put on my own promotion. Right. And I I've, I've really found that to be uh, the most lucrative thing to do, but it, it does take a lot of work to promote shows, and uh, you really you really need a good uh, even as an independent, you still really need a good village of people around you. I'm real lucky. I've got uh, Kevin Dunn from Long Hair Productions out of Las Vegas that helps me out. Uh, uh, Deborah Wachowski that's uh, up in New Jersey and Cynthia Davey in, in Michigan. There are just several people that have uh, uh, come online and helped me out. Uh, uh, Sheree Cosler at Echo Eyes Productions. Uh, there are just a lot of people that have really pitched in and helped out. And it truly does take a village of people to do all of this. You know? No, it does. It, it takes it's a network, and, and, you know, with the Internet and all that, it makes it much easier. But, hey, this news report just came in. Not to interrupt, it, it's Monica Lewinsky, and she says that she's endorsing Trump because the last Clinton left a bad taste in her mouth. <laughs> I, just, I thought I'd throw that in there. <laughs> but, any, but anyway, <laughs> it's, you know. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, um, I lost my train of thought. I just saw that. And I had to say it. But you're right. You have to have people, man. You got to have people. And I just like just. <laughs> I think we lost Free Ride. He's gone. Is he? Here? So, yeah. He's <laughs> no Free Ride's here, and I'm listening. I said I can't believe you said that. You got away with. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. Hey. 
you know, I, I say it was, it, it, she apparently doesn't swallow because it was on the dress. So, yeah, yeah. I, you know, I have a problem with that. But that's not the point. That's not why we're talking to Rick. No, I just had to say that. You know, <laughs> you know uh, and we don't talk well, you politics. You know what they say, free ride, different strokes for different folks. Different folks, that's, that's right. right. That's right. He, he likes that kind of thing. But anyway. That song, that song was written by Alan Thick and sung by Alan Thick. Do you know that? Different strokes, <laughs> different yeah. strokes for different yeah. folks. Yeah. 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 Alan wrote, Thick sang that. Alan Thicke saying that really? Yeah, yeah. You know, he was gay. He has and, and since since you know that he sang that song, I got a bad. He was feeling not Alan you know. Thicke was not gay. Yeah, oh yeah, he was. He died. He's son, yeah, he's no. not even dead. You know, Alan Thicke, I thought was gay, wasn't no, he? he? His son just had a freaking number one hit a few years ago. Robin Thicke, he's not dead. Okay, all God, right. He's got, he's got good hair too. <laughs> He's got good hair. See, I told yeah. you he was gay. I love 80s hair. <laughs> I, I still wish I had my John Stamos pompadour. Man. Oh, here we go. Okay. Yeah. Dude, dude. Okay, last week we were talking about, we were talking about um, uh, man, crushes. Uh, man crushes. Okay. Uh, what, what's your, who's your man crush, dude? Me? Yeah. yeah. Rock star, whatever. Oh, God, there's, all, there's only one. That'd be Hendrix. Well, Jimi I, Hendrix, I, I really? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah, I, now I feel like dude. shit. Yeah. I'm thinking, you know, a rock star. Mine would be Jim Morrison. Yeah, I, I think he's just cool, man. I Jim just, thought, you know, Morrison. yeah, he wore the leather pants and shit. You know, he talk. He'll talk too fucking much. Huh? He talked too much. Like, and in my dream, oh, shut up. You know, oh, shut but, up. <laughs> <laughs> I, mine would be Steve Vai. Steve Vai. Oh, that's cool. That's yeah. cool. Yeah. Yeah. Big hero of mine. Big yes. hero of mine. I, I, when I first saw Steve Vai, I first saw him in uh, Crossroads, the Ralph Macchio movie. Yeah. And he played it. I'm like, who the fuck is that? You know, and then and the next year or so, the David Lee Roth album came out. I'm like, oh, my God, this is like. You know, awesome. I grew up because my dad's favorite guitar player was Eric Clapton. N- n- nothing wrong with Eric Clapton, but he got shoved yeah. down my my throat so much to Eric Clapton by my dad. You yeah. know, it was like, oh my god, dad, there's other people. You know, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I still love Eric Clapton. But when I heard Steve, oh, Vai, yeah. Steve Vai changed everything for me. You know, and uh, yeah, yeah, that's definitely. Well, I'm I'm big into Vi. I'm I'm big into the G3 tour every oh, year yeah. because you know Vi Satriani, Eric Johnson has been on there. Yeah. Mountain and uh, I have I just have a huge even huge John Petrucci was on it the one year. Oh, John. love John Petrucci. Yeah, do you know that? Uh, but you know, like, you know, guys. There's a, a good friend of mine that uh, it, it blows me away. A gentleman named Niles Belight that uh, you need to go check out. Uh, he's got a band called Sages Recital. He's basically okay. just like an online guitar instructor that would amaze you. Oh yeah, uh, I, and I was actually able to strike a friendship with him easy on Facebook. And there are there are so many guys out there like Guthrie Go Band. They're yeah. just like on they're they're you know overseas and Europe and stuff, and they're just like giving lessons on the internet. And it's amazing. It's just amazing where guitar is now and where it's headed. You know? Yeah, well, I'll have to check that out. Now, you you're a big Dream Theater fan, correct? Oh, yes, sir. You know, Mike Portnoy, their drummer, you know, he's in mm-hmm. uh, the Winery Dogs. Does oh, yeah, anybody know what other, band, what, what other band he's in right now? He's in another band. Does anybody know? I'm not no. sure. He's the drummer in Twisted Sister now. You are kidding me. No, no. He took over. A.J. Perro died uh, late last yeah. year, and Mike Portnoy mm-hmm. took over for the drumming duties while they tour. Wow, how cool is that? Yeah, that's real cool. And uh, I, I couldn't believe it. I'm like, wow, he's like, like half their age. I'm like, oh. <laughs> you know, but, but you know, it's cool, though. You know, I, I mean, it's, he's, just, yeah. he's a kick-ass drummer. He'll just do anything. He's like Christopher Walken. Just give me the script. I'll fucking do it. You know, I mean, it's like he'll play with, with anybody. And the Wild Oaks, holy shit. Who knew wow. Richie Kotsen could sing that well, too? Can can you guys believe? Can you guys believe we've talked for, wow, an hour and ten minutes? I think this is our longest one yet, man. Uh, we we've well, got. Man, a, I really appreciate you guys having me on tonight. Oh, I've had so, a ball. 
we are we were so pleased. It was such a great conversation, man. Um, so the new uh, the new album comes out in July, the end of July, right? And, sure. And uh, we we love to hear the rest of it. And I know you've got one or two more in your in your sock there that you're going to pull out. And uh, man, I, I just appreciate you coming on the show tonight. It's been our pleasure to have you as our guest tonight. Well, thank you guys. It's an honor to be on and a privilege. And uh, I'd love to come back anytime. Hit me up. Okay, bro. Oh, we will, uh, definitely. We will. oh, definitely will. Definitely will. And uh, you'll be hearing a lot more from Rick on KGFrocks.com. Don't miss it, man. It's going to be a good album, I'm sure. I love it. All right, man. Thanks a lot, Rick, for coming on tonight. Thanks, bro. Good night, man. Good night, man. Good night, bro. Yeah. Rock and roll, man. What a great guest. Yeah. Man, I, I didn't mean to cut him short, I, but we had been on for so long. Um, that, uh, you know, I got, I got to bring in Eddie and, uh, we've only got like 20 minutes to kill the show. So I didn't want to cut him off, but, uh, what a great conversation, man. Do, especially, especially that internet radio thing, mm-hmm. especially that internet radio thing, man. I got to tell you, man, that was great stuff. All right. And, bring uh, the red rocker junior. In. I'm bringing the little red rocker in the little red rocker. Let me bring him in here. Add to group call. Yes. There he is. He better have his leather pants on. He doesn't have any leather pants on. Where's his... Yeah. E- Eddie. What up? What, what up, up, dude? How you doing, man? I'm chilling. You're chilling? Yeah. Yeah, we just got done talking to Rick Oh, DeLosier. I was doing that earlier. I was chilling like a Dylan listening to Bob... Chilling like a villain listening to Bob Dylan. I said that wrong. Fuck it. <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. God He's killing me. He's killing damn. me tonight, man. This has been a damn good show, and uh, uh, we, we're so glad that, that you could join us this evening. And I just want to real fast uh, let the folks know that uh, your show is Friday night at Pops. And yes, who's going to be playing with you guys? Who's going to be out there with you? Decade of Decadence, a tribute to Motley Crue. Excellent. This will be... If I'm not mistaken, I think this is going to be their premiere show at uh, Pops. Their at first Pops. Time at Pops. Okay. Uh, and then uh, after that will be AZDZ, a uh, tribute to ACDC. Uh, that this, makes sense. This will yeah. be their, uh, will not be their first time, but this will be their uh, their first time back with their new lineup. With their uh, new and, lineup, uh, yeah. Yeah, from what I from what I understand, they, they really, they really, they really turned it up. So did they, did they get a singer from a, a Guns N' Roses cover band now? <laughs> I don't know if you heard about this, but somebody actually posted a video of our local rock station, KC. I don't mm-hmm. want to say that out loud, but I did. Sorry, <laughs> that's okay. Go ahead. Posted a video um, of Axel singing. Uh-huh. Not good. No, I know. It's not good. No, they, they did their first show tonight in Lisbon, Spain. Is that, yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they yeah. did their very first show tonight. And I, you know what, could you see all of a sudden look out and see, you know, the crowd dwindling and <laughs> getting yeah. smaller? Well, see, see my, my opinion on the whole thing is, is okay, X, or not X Rose, but yeah, Angus Young, okay, he's an okay guitar player. But I like Brian Johnson's vocals in ACDC. I, I loved his. Vocals, I can't imagine you know? what what he's gonna sound like with them with that with that just that steady fucking just boom 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 shit. He can't do ACD, it. He, I don't Ed, think he can Ed, do it. Eddie Eddie can attest to this. The way the way um, Brian Johnson sang, he screamed and growled it, and like every inch of his you know whatever. Axel can't do that. No, Axel, I don't. Has, Axel has a. It's a completely different style of singing the way right. he does it. So. It's a it's a nasal tone. Todd and I were talking about this during the interview. It's a it's a nasally ty- type of singing. Right. And Brian Johnson was just from the guts, guts. man. Yeah, from yeah. the nuts. Yeah. I mean, really. Yeah, it's, you're right. It's uh, I, yeah. I don't I don't see it working, but uh you know, it is what it is. It is what it is. It's done. You know, I mean, right. I think they're just going to do the tour. And uh, God, please don't let them make an album together. Please. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
Cause, no, I yeah. think what they said was that I read this thing where they said that they were going to just use Axel for this tour, and then after that they're going to finish the tour up, and um, then they are going to go back to England and go in the studio, and they're going to look for a new lead singer. And that was the story that I read. So I'm thinking that this is just a, a temporary. He got the job through a temporary service. And that's what happens when you get a temporary service. You get really lousy. Um, anyway, this um, this is what we brought Eddie on for tonight. Tonight we uh, uh, actually it will release on Tuesday afternoon, um, and it is a video uh, interview with my good friend Eddie Chris. And we're going to talk about everything from his uh, beginnings to his to his current day of what's going on with Red and other other projects that he has going on. And uh, we talked about some intimate stuff. And we talked about some uh, talked about his guitars and showed off his guitar collection, which is really boss. And so you really want to check it out. It's going to be on Facebook. It's going to be on our on our YouTube channel over at KGF Rocks TV One. And then it's also going to be posted on our webpage at kgfrocks.com and um it'll be that shared all over the way that was that was some good that was a good, great conversations yeah it was we had a really good time and uh, except we had, free ride free ride looked a little bloated well yeah i i dude i'm looking at the video man i jesus christ i had no idea and he said well the camera adds 10 pounds i said fuck it added 60 pounds to me i had no idea i am that big uh so uh maybe we can tone it down for the next one i do but anyway i am uh uh, yeah that will release on tuesday afternoon and uh once we get all the you know all the the glitches out and get everything transferred and moved around and get it downloaded uh we'll get it all taken care of and we'll be doing that on tuesday evening Okay, and uh, you'll find it all over the place on Facebook and stuff. So we want you all to check it out. It's a lot of fun, and uh, I had a great time. And more of those to come, by the way. We've already talked about that. But uh, I'm going to do it. I'm doing a, uh, a video interview this week. Who are you talking to? I'm doing myself. You're going to do yourself? <laughs> well, you you got a big enough head for that. That's for yeah. sure. I'm going to do myself true. as me, the real person, and then interview Guido. The entertainer, we know the entertainer, right? You know. Okay, all right. Well, I'll yeah. wait for that. Is, is You're gonna do that in third person. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. gonna ask he the questions. <laughs> he'll ask the questions, okay, and then he'll he'll cut tape, and then he'll get the answer, and then he'll ask. Well, and the I'm gonna change clothes too. Change so, clothes, yeah, yeah. I, you know, he's gonna shave, and yeah, see, he can yeah. shave for for the interview. And the interviewer and tape that after he does the answers by I am not then, shaving that's too much work <laughs> anyway yeah. anyway so Eddie so Friday night's big and then you have you have another show coming out that I just heard about what do you got going on yes sir we have uh, our alter egos uh, nine lives our uh, tribute to Ario Speedwagon okay uh, we're going to be doing a show with uh, a band called Tres Ambres which is a tribute to ZZ Top. Um, we're going to be doing a, it's a kind of a co-headline deal, if you will. We're both, we're both going to be doing about the same amount of time. About a, each band's going to be doing roughly about an a hour and a half set, and that's going to be on June 11th, okay. uh, Saturday night, June 11th. Cool. Uh, also at Pops. That'll be another uh, part of the tribute series that they're doing out there. Uh, the show's been announced. It hasn't really been. They haven't really started advertising it much yet. But uh, we will. We do have tickets available that we will start putting out at our normal uh, locations, which uh, we will be getting out. So, uh, actually, uh, I have some in my possession now. So, I will get. <laughs> I will get you some, Todd, at okay. the show for you guys to uh, do with as you please. Uh, okay. All uh, right, and you can hand some out, whatever, do what you want with, uh, of okay. course. Uh, and that's going to be another, like I said, that's going to be another one of that coming out. And then uh, we will be uh, the following weekend. Um, there's a possibility of us hitting the road to Kansas City, uh, doing a show, and then. Uh, hasn't we haven't confirmed it yet but we uh, might be doing that and then uh 
we've got a couple other shows coming up later in the year. Cool. Okay. All right. I want, I, I want to get a ZZ Top cover band and call myself the Pearl Necklaces. <laughs> Pearl Necklaces? <laughs> yeah. That would be an all-female band, though, wouldn't it? No, the pearl necklaces. Th- no, it would be three females, real hot, a blonde, gender, a brunette, and a neutrality. fucking redhead. And yeah, yeah, that see, would be great. What a great. You can't say band. that no more. It can't be a girl band anymore. It can't. It, it can be. We it have can be. three bathrooms now, so you know we're yeah, a three piece band. There's a brunette, yeah. a blonde, and a redhead, and a transvestite, and all... <laughs> or a transgender. Here, I get one of them in there. So can't call it an all girl band. Then what would you call it? Yeah, um, I mean that's my thinking. You know, the I, pearl, the I, I, pearl sure. necklaces. Three girls. Three three all, girls in the all third gender band. Yeah, it's an all yeah, gender know. band. It's you know, a female now it's, band. Now it's vaping in the transgender bathroom. You know, instead of <laughs> in the bathroom. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. Would it be a, would it be an, an inner band and then a guy band would be an outer band? Or something like that. You know. Yeah. Brand yeah. A, brand B, brand I don't know. A, brand B, yeah. right? Band if you're, A. If you're band confused, a. would you? If you're confused, would you, would you be an inner outer band? Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Well, well, well Freeride already is an inner outer band. So no, you know. no, no, no. Did you see his mustache? I, yeah, it's in the video too. Yeah. So it's a cheesy mustache, huh? Yeah, okay. Well, it's coming <laughs> off tomorrow, man. <laughs> I'm just fucking with you, dude. You look, you look tough. It looked tough. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I want to sing. Every time I see it, I want to say, YMCA. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm just fucking Wow. Right. <laughs> As I flip him off in the video, I'm shaving his son of a bitch up. Looks that bad. Huh? Okay. No, All it right. doesn't but, look that yeah. bad. I'm just messing okay. with you. No, I'm going to grow a spike instead. That'll be the difference. A spike. Yeah. <laughs> Do a Hitler stash. Do a Hitler stash. I did that, man. I tried it. I was laughing my ass off. I said, "No, it's got to go." <laughs> Just think about that. If if somebody did have that, <laughs> you'd be offended by that. You know, we should no. do that. No, wow, man. that's bro- that's just rude. Yeah. It is rude. I mean, color that's it brown. Horrible. Color yeah. brown. It's like Charlie Chaplin, though. I mean, but Hitler's no. not the only one that had one of those. No, types he's not. Of but he's, I mean, if you see that mustache, you don't think of fucking Charlie Chaplin. Oh yeah, I do. I do. Don't really? you, Eddie? Think about that. Charlie Chaplin did the, uh, what was it, that, uh, what was the name the of tramp. the movie? No, not the yeah. Tramp. He, well, uh-huh. he had a mustache in that as well, uh-huh. but it was the, the Great Dictator. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, the Great Dictator. Yeah, the Great Dictator. Yeah, yeah but he was, playing, he was playing Hitler. Well, yeah, he kind of sort of, he had X's on his sleeve, <laughs> right. not swastikas. Right. I mean, he was, he, was, he was mocking Hitler. He was making, you know, it was yeah. a, a satire. It was a satire. Yeah, he was mocking Hitler. Oh, it wasn't a satire. It was a direct shot. Yeah, yeah it definitely yeah. was a direct shot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah he, it was. He portrayed him as a lunatic, and that's exactly what he was. A you know lunatic. what? Yeah, speaking of Charlie Chaplin, nobody that, that, that man really was the first great actor. You know, I mean. Well, yeah, I mean, he really was. video wise, video wise. Yeah, sure, I mean, sure. yeah, for the motion picture age, he was the first great actor because. He did so many different facets, and he didn't care about himself. He'd get hurt for the scene or do whatever, you know. And he, he some of his movies are no sound to them, and they're still like you watch them; they're well, entertaining. You, you know, what do you think about uh, who's your favorite man? I'm going to ask you, Eddie. Who's your favorite? Is it Charlie Chaplin, The Three Stooges, or Abbott and Costello? Oh, oh Abbott and Costello, hands down. Well, you Abbott see the Three Stooges in there, and I have to pick them because that's my favorite comedy. Yeah, team ever. yeah. Three Stooges were barking, man. Them, them guys there, poor. Uh, they used to people used to slap uh, what's his name around out, out in public. They used to go up and smack him like Curly. in school. Curly, yeah, yeah. He drove him insane, man. The guy went crazy. The only oh, reason God. why I don't say the Three Stooges is because they Abbott and Costello were always consistent, mm. and the Three Stooges. Were, were never actually the three Stooges. They were more like the thirteen Stooges. Yeah, right, yeah, right, 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 right. Yeah. So well, the original, th- exactly the original seven. No, how many? Six. Yeah. Six Stooges. I, I yeah. like them the, the original Stooges, and then I liked them with Mo or not Mo, um, Shep. Shep. Then, well, a- then Shep. after that, nah, I didn't like him. Yeah, Curly yeah. Joe. He was stupid. Yeah. Uh, he was gay. I guess. I don't yeah, know. Curly but, Joe Dorita. Yeah. Yeah. He was. He was. He was. You know. That, that was blatant. Right there, that was something special. Stop! Yeah. Stop! Yeah. So okay. you can't say gay. You can't, you can't say gay. Or you're gonna offend I somebody. I can say Stop. gay. I can say there's nothing wrong with being gay. 
There's no, nothing wrong with being gay. Hey, but, not my choice, but okay. I'm not mocking being gay. That's not a good <laughs> thing to do for a radio station. You don't do that. The boy cost the shit out of you. You got to be cool, you know? Actually, so. <laughs> actually, sometimes that's great for a radio station because they I, might boycott the shit out of us, but then everybody else is like, well, I got to listen to that and see why they're boycotting them. Yeah. Now, now you know that there was an Abbott and Costello and, and Three Stooges connection, correct? Yes. Those was are, there? No. Was there? No. Tell us. Tell us. Shemp. Shemp. Yeah. It was in Abbott and Costello movies. Oh, okay. He's yeah, actually he, uh, their yeah. brother. He's Mo and Curly's brother. Yeah, Shemp, the it was Shemp, he was Shemp, Lu- Lu- Shemp Howard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Lucille Ball did uh, did a, a Three Stooges or two. She played in a couple of those. So she's Lucille in... Ball is right here from where I was. I live. Oh, from Buffalo, really? Well, right up closer. She was a uh, Jamestown, but it's close to Buffalo. Yeah. Ah, ah, yeah. See, we, we we talk about all kinds of shit on this show. This is KGFRocks.com, and this is the Conjugal Visits with my my friend uh, Eddie Christ here with us, and uh, my friend Guido over there in Buffalo. And uh, we're running out of time, fellas. So, with that being said, another reminder: the video interview with Eddie will be everywhere. Just look for it. Okay, and I hope you enjoy it. Friday night, May 13th. And also the show Friday night, I will be there with bells on and uh, with no question about it. I can't make that one. Sorry, Eddie. And I'll be uh, (laughs) I'll be handing out bumper stickers and stuff. And uh, since Casey hardly ever shows up, I'll uh, go ahead and hand out some of my bumper stickers. (laughs) That'll piss him off good and proper. (laughs) I don't want to do that, though. Don't want to do that to Eddie. Don't want to do that to Eddie. (laughs) Eddie will be getting a call. From, ah! No, we, we won't do that to you, Eddie. But uh, <laughs> you want to check out all the great shows uh, tomorrow night. Starting tomorrow night, we got uh, the uh, Metal Anima show with uh, Mr. Rob. Uh, boy, my buddy Rob. Yeah, Rob is cool. And then Tuesday afternoons we have Diamond and her lunch show. She does a really good show. She plays some kick-ass music, man. You want to check it out. Also yeah. on Wednesday, Wednesday is the King of Rock. Oh, and in the afternoon before that, though, is uh, our good friend um, uh, Wild, Wild Bill. Bill Hill. And then, now, do, uh, ship, now give mine the proper introduction now since you And then it up. the king. That's right. Guido. He's on the- Wednesday night. Thursday uh, afternoon is, uh, I think that's, oh, uh, Mr. Uh, Thursday evening is uh, Mr. Bad Habit. And then on Friday, it's Diamond again in the evening this time. And she does an evening show. And Wild Bill in the morning. And Wild Bill in the morning on Friday. Mm -hmm. So check out all of our shows here on KGFRocks.com. And stay with us on Conjugal Visits. Next week's Conjugal Visit, we have uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Lyndon Sickmeyer from Mars Needs Guitars. So that's going to be a great show. He's returning guest. He's actually been on our show before. So it's going to be So is Eddie. Huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Eddie's, Eddie's been on our show. Good. Yeah, when we were with Mayhem. I remember yeah. that. <laughs> well, he was on KGF, too, in the beginning when we were on Blog Talk. That's right. He yes. was. Yeah, yep. you were. Yeah, you were. Well, yeah. Eddie, it's been a pleasure having you on this evening. We'll uh, we'll talk to you in the next uh, day or two. And, uh, yeah, I'll be at the show Friday night. Good. It would be good to see you guys play. Yes, looking forward to it. All right, big guy. We'll talk to you later, man. All, All right. right. You have, have a good night. For one. Uh, uh, yeah, you too, all right. Eddie. All right. Thanks, man. Bye. Yeah. See ya. Woohoo. Yeah, rock and roll, that, man. And that, 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 that's all, folks. We're out of time, man. We are out of time. Believe it. We we've beaten this one to death. See you later. Bye. Bye-bye. It's Sunday night, and this is The Conjugal Visit on kgfrocks.com.